Yo, yo, it's Tobin. This will be a quick one. One of my projects that's coming up in July, just a little project, is making a print slash embed map for the Quality of Life project. And the Quality of Life project itself is in desperate need of a refactoring. It's written in a way that I just don't write apps anymore. And it's using some tools that if I had started the project today, I'd probably be using some different tools. Rather than bite off that huge apple, I thought for this kind of print embed page, I would make that a whole separate project and then use the tooling and techniques, the ES6 and Babel and Browserify and all that happy stuff that I use for projects now. So I meant to do kind of a proof of concept to see if Mapbox, GLJS, and data-driven styling would work for this. Ended up, it ended up being so easy, I did a lot more work than I thought, and, and July is looking like uh, it's not going to be a hard month. So, this is what I made, which is in a very rough state. Now, if you're familiar with the Quality of Life project, uh, this will be kind of, some of it will be old hat to you. This is the whole app file, and it's got our moo cow, because cows. We're importing all our stuff. I'm using Axios to do fetching. Axios is, is really cool. It returns a promise, so you can say, fetch me these three things, and then do this when all three are done, which is a very handy thing. So, ba da ba, we're getting some parameters from URL options because it's going to be in a bed map. Right now I'm just fiddling using Mapbox GL's tiles. When the map is loaded, using Axios to get some meta, which will be used to populate uh, meta stuff, titles and subtitles and so forth. And we're getting the data itself, which is stored in a separate JSON file, and the GeoJSON which is in a GeoJSON file. I'm not using TurboJSON for this. Straight up GeoJSON is fine. That way I don't have to kind of translate it back out to GeoJSON when it gets to the client. When that's all fetched, fetched, it's putting all the returns into these values. And here's where the magic happens. I just set an array to use for janks to determine breaks. So for every feature in the GeoJSON, I loop through and I take the data, which will have that same ID in common, and if the data for that ID and year is a number, I assign a coral pleth value to that number and I push that number into my Jenks array. If it isn't, I take the uh, uh, coral pleth value and I assign a string of null. And then I pass the Jenks breaks, which will be an array, and the data off to our add map layer. Add map layer adds that as a source, goes to this neighborhood's fill, and these breaks are from the Jenks breaks, and assigns it to the chloropleth value. Then it adds another layer just for the boundaries. And you get this. That's how super easy that was. It's, uh, it's very fast. I'll just refresh this page so you can see it draws very quick. Very happy. Now, here's the bugaboo. I ran into something that's weird. I'm not sure if there's a reason for it or it's a bug or what. I'm going to investigate further. But, if I assign nulls, basically a data value a neighborhood ID in the data that doesn't have anything assigned to it gets a null. When I go back here, if I assign that null to there, so every core pleth is going to have the straight value from the file, you'll see this polygon should be empty because we have no data there. When I assign it to null, it picks the first value in the breaks, which is weird. Let's say, instead of assigning the null there, I just did this. So if the, coral, if the data value isn't a number, a coral pleth value never gets set. 
So that particular feature will have an ID and nothing else. It won't have a Coral Pleth key whatsoever. If I do that, it assigns it the last color in the breaks, which is weird. There's not even a Coral Pleth key there. So it's using the last thing as a break as a default value. What I found you have to do is assign it some silly value, like I'm just giving it a string of null. Then when I style it, I filter out anything with a string of null. And that seems to work okay. So that's just a weird, see now this is empty. It's just kind of a weird thing. I'm not sure why it does that, but it's something to be aware of. Anyway, I'm hoping in July I'll have a new GitHub repo for this. It's kind of neat to be able to, the printing is something they asked for because government people and paper. But the embed thing I think is going to be a lot neater. So people on the Quality Life dashboard can look up a particular year and a particular data set they say is interesting. And then they can click a button and size their embed and get the embed code and put it right on their website. And it'll just pull up with a map and a legend and here's the stuff. That I think is going to be pretty cool. Hopefully that'll be coming in July. Uh, it's uh, It'll be coming in July, whether we'll use it in July or not. I'll, I'll do it the way a normal human would want it done. And then I might have to spend a while negotiating with government semi-humans about how they want it done. But there it is. Uh, it's neat stuff, it's stuff I'm working on right now, and that should be coming out soon. And that's about it. If any of you are fathers or have fathers, uh, happy Father's Day, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.